Shaylee of Day Shell in the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Hell yeah, yeah thank, you. Dude. thank you so much for joining, brother. Uh, go to at Day Shell Music, by the way, to support him. Um, he's out of Southern California. Letting Go just came out. I have a ton of questions for you, brother. But first, let's start off with what exactly is Operation Pegasus? Uh, well, well, first of all, thank you for having me, dude. I appreciate it. Um, I haven't done an interview in a while, so it's nice. Um, but Operation Pegasus is a campaign I launched to help fund my new album. As a lot of my fans know, or people that don't know who I am, I'm an independent artist that does everything on his own. That means I write, I perform all the instruments. Sometimes I even mix and release my music, but everything is funded through me. And as of now, I, I'm kind of against you know, getting the label just because of the position and the, and you know, what I've gone through in the past with labels, I feel like right now in my position, I'm better off alone. And, but in order to do a full fledged album, you know, I'm going to need some support. So what I did is I started to go fund me and made this really cool video that kind of explains a little bit of backstory of my life. And then it goes into this new song and then it shows you like what you would receive for donating. So Operation Pegasus is a fan funded campaign to fund the new album. Uh, the new album is going to be called Pegasus, but uh, the campaign is called Operation Pegasus because, you know, we're trying to get it to happen. So it's an operation. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, you said you played every instrument on the album. Um, how many instruments in general can you play? Well, I can play just about anything with strings. Um, not very good at violin, though, because I don't really understand the bow thing. Um, but, you know, I play keys. I'm not very good at it. But, you know, when you're recording in software, you can mess up all you want and move it around and make it perfect. So it's not that big of a deal. But primarily, my main thing is guitar. I started out on drums. Then I started playing guitar. Then I moved to bass. So I'm just kind of all well-rounded, and I just love all music. So it's... It's so cool, you know. If and someone I'm handed capable. you like a like a banjo, you could definitely get down. Uh, I do have a banjo. Oh hell yeah, six string banjo. Awesome. So yeah, nice. Um, what is what is uh what is letting go exactly about? And was it a hard record to um, write? Uh, well, letting go isn't a record. It's just a single that it's one Sorry, of the songs right. that is probably going to be on the album. Um, but letting go is a song about you know, a relationship that you were in and, you know, who, whatever it may be. And while you're in the relationship, it just starts getting really rocky, you know, toxic, people like to say. Um, and it's just so unhealthy. And, you know, you, you, you don't want to leave because it's all you know and it's very hard. But when you do find that strength to leave, that's that's not where it all ends. It's like leaving on good terms and wishing them well is very difficult in a toxic relationship. So this song's kind of like a reminder to, you know, let the past be the past, wish them well on their quest for, for love. You know, like in the chorus, it says, I hope he loves the way you want him to. Like, I hope that you find somebody that loves the way that you want to be loved. And I wish you well, like whatever bullshit we went to, all the, like it's, it is what it is. And uh, I still love you, but you know, so you belong to someone else, you know? Let's go back to another question. Um, I do want to play "Letting Go" here in a minute, but uh, a couple more questions before we do. What What would you say is is if you could have your you you get to set the lineup? So Day Shell's either opening for somebody ginormous like Metallica size, or you're the headliner, but you get to pick every single opening act. What is your dream tour for Day Shell? Like present bands, or can there be people that have passed away? Uh, yeah, I guess so. That that's cool. Deceased deceased um, artists are okay. One of the bands, okay, if it, like let's say it's a five band package, including myself. Uh, I would say Incubus would have to be on that roster. Led Zeppelin, Rush, and uh, one more would probably be Blindside. Blindside, dang, I saw them in Orlando years ago. Years I love ago. Blindside, man, like that. If it wasn't for Blindside, you wouldn't be hearing how I sound in the chorus of letting go because it was Christian, the singer that showed me that you can scream with a note in it, you know? 
and I took it from there, you know? That's awesome. Hell yeah. It's so good. So good. Hell yeah. Thank you. What, uh, what DAW do you use to do all your recording? I just use Logic. It's not like, I didn't choose a, a program. I didn't have that luxury. It's just something that I just, I, would, I started on GarageBand. And then I moved over to Logic, which is its big brother. And I've just been there, you know. Uh, I know it's not the best. There's a lot of things that it doesn't do that others do. But I get the work done, so that's all that matters. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's do a, a couple of fun questions. I'm a man of many tattoos, myself as well as, as you. Uh, what is your most painful tattoo? And what does focus mean to you? Uh, my most painful tattoo, uh, I think it was the back of my calf. I had this one kid that was... He's like 17 years old at the time and I was like 19 or something and he wasn't very well rounded and he was I don't know man I was just squirming in so much pain it was it was like I wanted to quit you know but I pulled through and it is actually the crappiest tattoo on my body which I need to get covered up <laughs> but the heaviest hand ever just digging in yeah oh yeah uh, the whole time you're the like worst. no dude relax that, yeah that is the worst um, um I'm sorry and then, uh, the tattoo focus is, um, this is very personal to me, uh, is kind of something I need to, to look at when I'm in the mirror. Because, you know, being a one-man band, doing everything on my own, and feeling like I want to give up more days than not, you know, now, every time I look in the mirror, no excuse. Get that focus. Get to work. Let's do this pussies don't make it to the top you know like that's that's like i need it i need it and fortunately i had to tattoo myself to remind myself but it's like i can't go back now you know it's a very personal thing to me and it means a lot i could dig that for sure is there is there a particular artist that you've wanted to do a collab with maybe on a day shell record or you just getting on one of their tracks and just didn't work out due to like timing or label didn't clear it or something no, I've never really reached out to people to, I get this question quite a lot, actually. And it's not that I'm opposed to having people, you know, feature or, you know, on my album and whatnot. But it's just like, as far as people that are uh, possible, like people that I know in my genre and stuff, I don't, and this is no shade at them. I just don't see anybody out there bringing something Unless it like with Dropout, that was a whole nother ballgame because they were completely different and unique. And I've always wanted to do something like that. I grew up in the new metal era and I, I knew it was going to sound cool. And I love those guys. And they did such a good job. Did you it. reach out to them? And, and what was their response when, when you when you hit them up? Yeah, I reached out to them. Well, the story goes, I met Adam. We played in uh arizona at one point and adam came up to the show and I, i'll never forget it was like this like, little white guy just singing along to every song and i'm like who's this guy you know and he's like oh you know i didn't really think anything of it but when i went out to arizona to record mr pain i found this band called dropout kings and i'm like oh my gosh this is what it's been what, what the industry's been missing like this they're doing it right like especially their first album i'm like dude this is so good and i was talking to the producers people that were in the studio at the time i'm like have you guys heard this band they're like yeah they're from here the the singer actually loves your band a lot he's like obs obsessed i don't know if they use that word but he was like really loved they shall i'm all no way they're like yeah i'm all do you think they'd be on the album if i asked them because i'm struggling with this one song vocally and i feel like this could work they're like hit them up hit them up like the next day he comes out and we're working <laughs> you know it's so amazing it's uh, yeah he's a great, have you great. have you ever had the chance to perform combat live no I haven't toured. I don't think I've even. I don't think I've even toured since the album's been since uh, Mr. Payne was dropped. Like I was touring while I was being promoted, and we were playing some of the new songs. But yeah, I don't think uh, I've even played a show it, since it, then. It, am I correct to understand that you reside in Southern California? Yeah, Southern California. My friend, in ten days, Dropout Kings are playing my festival in Southern California. What would it take? to get you to come on stage with Dropout Kings, who are literally our headliners. I'll sh can you see what's on my screen right now? Yeah. Here's where it, what it is. Dropout Kings, 1030, happening in Apple Valley. Can you, can you bless us with some awesomeness? If not, I totally get it. You're a busy man, but maybe you could reach out to Adam and set that up. It would blow my mind. That would be cool. I mean, they would have to learn the song. I mean, I have the backtracks. It's possible. I can hit them up and see what's up and check my schedule too. 
and see what's going on. But that would be really fun and uh, just good to see them because they're such good dudes, hard workers, and you know you got to respect the dropout teams for sure. Uh, what I, I think one of the first questions I asked you, you, you answered that you sometimes mix and master your stuff. In the event that you don't do the mixing and mastering, who who do you trust in the industry to send your stuff to for the final product? Um, well, since I've gone solo, I went solo and I started learning how to produce in about the end of 2017. So I'm fairly new to the game. When I did Mr. Payne, I hired a, a, a friend at the time, a producer to do that. And since then, I started, you know, really hone in on my mixing skills and actually releasing my crappy mixes to the world to enjoy <laughs> or be disgusted in however you want to look at it. Um, so it's kind of just been me. Although letting go, I knew that I was in the process of getting a new computer, upgrading a lot of stuff. I didn't want to like have to figure it out and stress and, you know, forget a lot of things. And, you know, when you, when you, when you write your song and then you produce it, and it's just you doing it, you're going to miss a lot of things. You could be way better if you had an outside ear. So I shipped this song off to Cameron Mizell to mix, uh, which Cameron's worked with Dropout Kings as well, and that's how we know each other, because I did a feature with Dropout as well. And he did a fabulous job, killed it, you know. Um, but, yeah, moving forward for this new album that I'm working on, that's what Operation Pegasus is all about, uh, I'm definitely, you know, going to look out there. Some of the people... I have on my list is obviously Cameron and Joey Sturgis because we're really good bros from the past and he's been dying to produce an album, but you know, just hasn't worked out yet, but I'm, I'm going to see what's up there and just shop a little bit, see what's out there, see who could potentially be like perfect fit for Dayshell. You know, Dayshell is a kind of a hard band to mix because it's, we, it mixes differently. We're really bass heavy and by that, I mean the bass is very heard in our mixes. The guitars are usually ducked a little bit quieter than normal standard metal. Um, so it's it's a unique thing that you need to find, you know. But mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, do you ever talk to Austin Carlisle anymore? Yes. Uh, he lives in SoCal. Um, he lives yeah, he lives in SoCal. I go and visit him every once in a while. We hang out, go to his events and stuff. You know, we're still, we're still homies, you know. We, cool. We've even, like, dabbled into making some music together but we have no plans technically for the future uh it's not coming anytime soon but i'm sure someday you know we're gonna probably do a song at least together again just for the fans you know just uh of mice and men tidbit my favorite track that uh, they've ever done as a band is when you can't sleep at night it's my absolute favorite oh, that, that's 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 all me dude so i, I know that i know that's why it's my favorite it gets me in the feels every time i hear it it's it's my it's probably one of my favorite acoustic songs and then it's not it's not acoustic by the end of it but it kind of just starts off and just goosebumps man goosebumps for real it's so good uh what's your what's your go-to munchy snack like your favorite just greasy fast food munchy snack of some kind greasy fast food quickie um shoot i mean there's so many dude like uh, I'm guilty of McDonald's every once in a while. For some reason, I like to get the little Duker cheeseburgers. Like there's, it's like the number eight. It's two shitty cheeseburgers, a fries and a drink. And I don't know. There's something about it. Their fries are so good, and those burgers are just perfect amount. And you know, I, you know, I'm guilty. I'll get it like once a month and splurge. But then the next day, you know, I'm like, I feel guilty. <laughs> yeah. Gotta gotta hit the gym for a second to. <laughs> Uh, how did how would somebody go about how would you prefer somebody go about possibly hiring you to get on their song? Um, it's a you can contact me, you know, send me a direct message, uh, you know, with all the information. The thing is, I get a lot of people that are into it and they email me, but they don't even have the material. It's like so I'm kind of apprehensive about that. But yeah, if you just reach out to me, make sure you have your song ready to show me, you know, and. and uh, you know, I'll check it out. And if it's something I feel like I can give something to or I like, then we'll, we'll move forward. But, you know, it's a 50 50 chance because I'm, you know, I have, I take a lot of pride in my voice. And if I'm not feeling a song or it's not my type of genre or whatever, you know, it's nothing against them, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, I just want to feel proud of what I do. I, I take a lot of pride in my, my work. And, you know, a paycheck's nothing, you know, if I'm not happy with what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you when you were when you were younger, let's say before even a high school band or anything like that, uh, what were you driving around your car jamming to nonstop? Maybe 
practicing your vocals in the car at, at volume number 11. What do you, what do you jam in when you were uh, way back in the day? Way back in the day, like when I had my car, um, I was listening to a lot of tool. Uh, I really was, I remember I was really into that 10,000 days album. You know, it opened my mind up to so many different time signatures and I don't know. It's still that, that band holds a special place in my heart. But yeah, that was mainly one of the bands that I listened to. And of course, Blindside and of course, all the other bands that I love. But I think particularly back in the day that I can remember, it was a lot of Tool. Uh, let's see. Let's do, let's do, are you down to do some trivia? Sure. Why not? What would you say is the movie or TV show that you've seen the most? Or if I ask you a question, it could be anything from Jaws to Ghostbusters to Simpsons, Harry Potter, Terminator. What have you seen the most? Or if I ask you a question about this show or movie, you will not get stumped. Oh, uh, shoot. Let's see. It would probably be Trailer Park Boys. There's something about that show. Yes. So I resonate with it because the thing about that show is, although it's very humorous and there's all these characters, that shit is real. I grew up poor in trailer parks and these people exist and that's why i just resonate with it so much it's hilarious i i watched it last night i've probably seen every season a hundred times it's just kind of like that sound in the background you know you've seen all the movies and everything too oh yeah of course hell yeah is hip shot uh, gonna be on pegasus dude look what i have mr Leahy's dick shit nary what what yeah that is awesome yeah man I got the one that it was, uh, and his daughter sent me this. She wrote a she wrote a note and everything. She said the best currency, the most valuable of all, is gratitude. I thought that was very sweet. Very R.I.P. Mr. Leahy too. I, I believe he is is passed away yeah, he, now. He was my favorite too. He's the most convincing drunk person ever. For real, even guy. So funny. You said Hipshot is going to be on Pegasus. No. Uh, Hipshot won't. That was for an acoustic project that I was starting, but I ended up canceling because I was losing uh, inspiration and I wanted to get back to metal. You know, it just, I love metal so much and soft stuff was really unmotivating me. Uh, But no, uh, Letting Go uh, will be potentially on the new album. I know a lot of people want it that way, but I always think like, wouldn't you want a new song or would you want me to re-release an old song, you know? But it looks like everybody's boat is for... uh, letting go to be on the album as well so of course it's it's a great it's a great song so it should absolutely be on the album for sure i want to play combat just to refresh you juice you up maybe you're starting to think about august 13th how we could pull this off i need about one minute to quickly look up uh trivia for trailer park boys because i'm guaranteed i'm going to stump you this is combat featuring dropout kings all right this one this one specifically i picked because i see you have rush in the background of uh of yourself right there and, and there's a, it's a question for trailer park boys related to rush who does ricky kidnap after mr Leahy snatches up the rest of the rush tickets oh, what did you say alex I- damn it that is yeah, correct yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> see you really have seen it every episode a hundred times Oh yeah, and I, obviously I love Rush. So, and th- I didn't even know that Rush was going to be in that show. And I'm like, yeah, this is my show. And I'm and I'm uh, my dad's from Canada, so I guess I'm Canadian too. So that's probably why I like it so much. Well done, well done. Um, if you if you had, let's just say hypothetically, uh, Pegasus comes out and it sells 20 million copies the first day. Now money, you have infinite money now. What would be your dream car and dream vacation? Well, I'm not much of a car person. Uh, I don't really care. You know, like, I would just get... My car's fine. I'd probably just take that money then and maybe buy somebody that needed a car a car if I had that much money. You know, my car gets me to point A to point B. Vacation? I don't know. I never really cared about that stuff either. Like, I, a vacation from my mind, if that's possible. <laughs> you know, because this thing's running a million miles per hour. There's a lot going on. So when I'm anywhere, like... If I'm in Hawaii or something, I'm not there. You know, that's kind of like the struggle that I've always had is not to get a, not to be a downer, but, you know, I've never really been able to escape my thoughts. So no matter where I'm at, I'm never present. I'm never in the moment. So vacations, I don't want one. You know, like I'll just be worried about all the shit I got to do back at home. You know? I'm the same way. I'll go on vacation and I'm working the whole time, like working on the show and other things the whole time. Uh, 
What is what's the hardest song? Let's say in the. It's, you said it's been a while since Dave Shell has toured, correct? Yeah. When, when on the last tour you did, what was the hardest song to play live? From a from a vocal and uh, guitar perspective. Hmm. Um. Maybe. It might be uh, spellbound. Uh, that's a tricky song to play drumming wise. There's a lot of ghost notes and it's, it's heavily evolved from the previous album. And even the guitar riffs are quite, you know, just it's weird. There's a lot of burps and genty stuff happening. And even vocally, you know, like I'm screaming so much. And for me, the way that I scream, it's full blown. There's it's not fry screaming. The technique I use is like everything I got but safely projecting it so it's not ripping my throat you know i, I just I, the way that i develop my technique but yeah that one's a tough one because you're pushing twice as much much air as you would for like a normal singing note you know so you gotta have those lungs expanded you know to to roll off the same question do you have a particular like vocal warm-up technique or process that you do before you start recording before you start to before you're going to go on stage uh not so much i never I, I always what I do is I would just test my voice and see where it's at and I, you know in the green room or whatever behind the stage when it's all loud I would do my high scream belt I'll see how that feels then I'll sing a melody that I'd like to sing which is kind of weird uh, it's, uh, my understandings from my cement that melody uh, if I can lock that in then I know that my vocal my singing is going to be smooth and if I can scream and it's full and it feels good, then I'm good. If, if, it, if it feels a little off, then I'll scream a few more times and I'll sing a couple other things until I feel, okay, there we go. But there's no like technique or warming up. I don't really sing that much at all unless I'm performing or recording. Oddly enough, you would think I sing all the time, but I don't really enjoy singing because it's a lot of work. <laughs> like you start sweating, you know, you're pushing everything you've got out. And have you heard me sing? That shit's no joke. <laughs> really belting it right there, pushing. I, I, I only have uh, two questions left for you, sir. Who treated you better, Spine Farm or Sumerian? Oh, man, that's controversial. I'm going uh, for a little dirt at the end. I don't know. I mean, they're both good for what they did, but, you know, it didn't work out with Shell for whatever reasons, you know, it happens. I think they, they both did what they could, um, but I will say... Uh, Sumerian gave a, Deshaun a better contract for sure, a really, really, really good contract. So, there's that. <laughs> and that was before Spine Farm, correct? Yes. Interesting. You think they would uh, Spine Farm would come in and try to one up and to steal you away there? Uh, my last question, sir. Can we also drop that GoFundMe one more time for Deshaun's Pegasus GoFundMe, please? in the chat. Uh, one, my final question, I ask every uh, person we have on the show the same question. What is a piece of music advice somebody in the uh, in the industry has given you that completely changed things or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want any starting up band to make? Uh, one piece of advice that I got from my manager was everything you see online, every band, it's a facade. It's not real. When you sit here and you compare yourself to all these people and all these things, you got to remember that it's not real. That's not really who they are. And I may not be describing it the way that he he described it to me or said it to me, but it, it really resonated with me because it gave for some reason it just like turned the switch off in my head. I'm like, he's right. Like it is all fake. I'm comparing myself to things that aren't real. And I know a lot of us know this, like on Instagram, like all the girls posting beautiful photos, all these girls comparing themselves to them and stuff. And I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about like the success in the music industry and how things are going. It's just, it's not real. Just stop letting that get in your head and um, hindering your, your, your growth, you know, just, it's all fake. Your reality is here, do what you got to do and move forward. So that's the only thing I can think about top of my head. It's fantastic advice. Uh, Shaley, I really appreciate it. You did not have to do this, but uh, we're excited. We're excited about uh, not only letting go, but the Pegasus album. We're going to share and do as much as we can to help you in your GoFundMe adventures. Hopefully we hit that goal. And uh, the fourth album is out. I'm sure it's going to be superb. Please consider August 13th. If you have any more questions regarding that, just message me and I'll, I'll tell you what I can about it. Um, otherwise, this is an absolute pleasure, man. I really, really appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me, dude. You guys have a good one, all right?
Hell yeah. Shaylee of Deja! Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your day.